Okay. So the first example we are going to do, we are going to start from a very simple example. And the, the example is to compute area of a rectangle whose length is 5 cm and breadth is 2 cm. So if you want to analyze this type of problem, it's a very simple problem that you know right from your primary school to compute area of a rectangle. So there are things you must try to identify. The first one is that you have to know the input data. From this problem, what are the input data that we can see? So clearly from this problem, we can see length as an input data. We can see breadth as an input data. So these two are clearly stated in the problem. There are times that things that are supposed to be an input data will not be there clearly. And since it is not there, you leave it. It's only those things that are clearly stated that you are going to bring out. So then we also need to know what is the expected output. So that is our output data. What is the question actually asking us to do? So this question now is asking us to compute area of a rectangle. So our output data now is area of a rectangle. So now the next thing you need to know is what are the process, processing requirements the processing requirements. So what, what are the things that you need to be able to compute area of a rectangle? So it's like you need the, you, you must know the formula. So the formula is length, length times breadth. So this is very simple. So we, are, we, are, we can easily know our input data, we easily know our input data, we know our output data, and we also know the processing requirements. So now we are going to move to another example. So we are going to move to another example. So this is another example. The example that we have here is a little more difficult than the first one that we have just done. So this particular one is also asking us to compute the average class score. So what we mean by average class score is the average score of the whole class. So a class teacher needs to compute the average class score of pupils in one subject. Number one in one subject, then in eight subjects. So you are required to analyze the problem as the first step of algorithm development. So as the first step of algorithm development, we need to analyze the problem first. And you know, in analyzing the problem, the first thing you need to know about the domain, what does average mean, and um, what do we understand by average, the average of a class. It's not the average of a particular student, average of the whole class. So we want to find the average of the whole class in one subject, and also find the average of the whole class in eight subjects. So. Um, now we are going to identify the input data from the problem that we have. So the input data, here they have told us the number of students in the class. Let me bring this one down so that you'll be able to see it. Of 20 pupils in one subject and in eight subjects. So there are we have the number of pupils. 
So that's number one. And another thing, <clears throat> another thing that we have here, though not explicitly explicitly stated, is score. Because for you to compute average, then score must be available. So also there, there is score of the students too, of each of the students. So the next thing is the output data. What do we want to have at the end of the day? So at the end of the day, we want to have average score. Average, average score of the class. That's what we want to have as our output. Now, the processing requirements. If you look at it very well, there are two things. Okay, average score of the class in one subject. That's the first thing that we want to know. Mm -hmm. Then average score of the class in eight subjects. So now in eight subjects. So now our processing requirements to find the let, let us now call this one average score one. Maybe in eight subjects. So let's call this maybe this is average average score one. And the other one will be average score two. So the other one will be average score two. So now for our processing requirements, the average score one will be total score. Total score of all the 20 students total score divided by the total number of students divided by number number of pupils we are dealing with pupils sorry number of pupils in the class now for our average score two we are dealing with total score not in one subject total score of all the eight subjects so that means that we are going to find total score in um, in subject one subject two subject three subject four all the subject eight and now have a grand total score so we can now call it grand we can call it grand total score we still get to name your variables but just Let's continue with this. So, grand total score over number, it's the same number of pupils. So, here we can see that total score itself is, a, is something that you need to process. You need, you need to process total score by adding score of the first student, score of second student, score of third student. So, that means that that's another thing that you are going to do as your processing requirements. You are going to write it also as your processing requirement. So that will be a score of student one plus score of student two plus. So you continue like that. You continue like that until you get to score of student 20. Now, for grand. For your grand total score. So you will have something like a total score. It will be total score in course in, in subject one plus total score in subject two plus. plus total score in 
up to total score in subject eight. Total score in subject eight. So that will give us the grand total score. So we can now see all these things that we need. You, are, you have seen your, if you don't analyze your problem properly, you will not be able to solve it, you will not be able to write a very good algorithm. When you don't have a good algorithm, you will not be able to solve the, uh, the problem correctly. So that's why we need to start from analysis of the problem. You have to know your input data, you have to know your output data, and you have to know the processing requirement. Most of the time, our processing requirements are always mathematical, but sometimes it may not be. And sometimes there might not be a straightforward mathematical formula to solve a problem, but you can even try and formulate one. So it depends on the type of problem you are trying to solve. So this is the second, this is the second uh, example that we are having here. So now let's move on to the third example.